Hello, this is Vasavi from At Home Tuition. In this video, let us see what do you mean by the zeros of a polynomial. So, by definition, a real number k is said to be a zero of a polynomial p of x if p of k is equal to zero. That is, just imagine we have a polynomial p of x and we assume a value k, a real number k for x and we replace all the x's with this k. In that case, if you get the answer as 0, okay, that means it is the 0 of that polynomial. For instance, let us take uh, an example like if p of x, I take it as x minus 7. Just imagine if a p of x is given as x minus 7. So, I can substitute any value, any real number for this x, right? The number which I take here, when I put it in the equation, in the polynomial, and if it gives me the answer 0, then I can call that number as a 0 of this polynomial. For instance, imagine if I take the x as 7 okay I replace the x so I have to replace everywhere uh, the x with 7 so I get 7 take away 7 so which is equal to 0 the final answer I get is 0 right when I replace the 7 in the place of x I got it as 0 so that means 7 is the 0 of this polynomial. So, I'll just tell you, to make, to make it clear, even more clear, we can take this p of x as y, okay, y. To show it geometrically, let us represent the y, y axis for p of x and uh, the equation, the polynomial x minus 7, the result we are going to show it in our x axis, okay. So, here, I can take, I can give different values for x. So here your y equals x minus 7. The same example I'm taking. Okay. I can give any values for x. Say for instance if I take it as 0, my y would be 0 minus 7. So that is a negative 7. Uh, replace here the x with the value you assume here. Okay. So next if I take it as 2, it would be 2 minus 7, right? So that will give you a negative 5 here, minus 5. So now another one we took was 7. The next value I took was 7. So that is 7 minus 7, it, it gives me 0. So this 7 is the 0 of the polynomial, understood? And when you represent in the graph here, I told you it could be geometrically, graphically represented. In that case, see when we plot these points, you get 0 and negative 7, 2 and 5, negative 5, okay. But here your 7 is equal to 0. So in the graph, here you have only till negative 3 and negative positive 3. So I, I couldn't show it here. I'll draw it here. Say for instance, if you have an x-axis and y-axis. Now let's plot it on this. Here what happens? It is 0 and minus 7. So x, when x is 0, your y is minus 7. So the point is here. Okay. So let me mark it here. Now, when x is 2, your y is negative 5. When x is 2, your y is negative 5. So somewhere here. Okay. And when your x is 7, that is here, uh, your y is 0. So this place. Okay. Now, you can see that the 0 is always on the x-axis, okay? Your 0 would be on the x-axis. So, by this, we know that your zeros would be on the x-axis, okay? Let's see a few more examples. Let's see how it will be graphed, okay? So, now I take a linear equation. So, the first one I'm taking is a linear x minus 2 okay <clears throat> as I said your polynomial is x minus 
2 so this is linear okay let us see how it will be uh, after drawing the graph okay so now when your y equals x minus 2 right so we are going to take different values for x and corresponding value of y we need to find out so let me take it as i start from negative 3 negative 2 these are the different values i'm going to give for x okay 1 2 and 3 now look when it is negative 3 your x is going to be negative 3 minus 2 right so i write that here it is minus 3 minus 2 so that will be a negative 5 here okay now when it is minus 2 it is minus 2 minus 2 so that will give you a negative 4 here and when it is 1 negative 1 minus 1 minus 2 so that is negative 3 now when it is 0 it is 0 minus 2 so that is negative 2 when it is 1 it is 1 minus 2 so that is a negative 1 and when it is 2 it is 2 minus 2 so that's a 0 okay so that's a 0 here and when it is 3 it is 3 minus 2 x is 3 so 3 minus 2 that is 1 okay so when we plot this let us plot from negative 1 to positive 3 maybe okay I'm going to plot this so you can see it is negative 1 is negative 3 right so when x is negative 1 y is negative 3 so it comes here right then when x is 0 your y is 2 so that's here when x is 1 your y is negative 1 so that's here when your x is 2 your y is 0 so that is here and I told you whenever you get a 0 that is your 0 of the polynomial and you see that point is on the x axis then when x is 3 your y is 1 so it will be here when you join this line okay when you join this line with a when you join these points you see you get a straight line here okay so for a linear equation you can find you get a straight line and only one point see here your order is one for linear equation the highest degree is one so you will see that the graph cuts the x-axis at only one place okay you can see here it cuts but it cuts the y-axis i'm saying i'm talking about the x-axis here your graph will cut the x-axis at only one place since it is a linear equation so now let me take another polynomial second degree polynomial so let me take it as x square minus 4 okay x square minus 4 so again we need to find the values right fill in the tables first so your y equals x square minus 4 let us take the values now so here we take x and we, we have to find what will be for y so let's take from minus 2 negative 2 negative 1 0 1 and 2 okay let's take like this now see here in this equation this is your 0 okay and we saw that cuts the x-axis let's see here now i have to replace the x with negative 2 right so this will be like negative 2 the whole square minus 4 so negative 2 the whole square is 4, four minus 4 is 0 oh we got the 0 here okay next is negative 1 the whole square minus 4 negative 1 the whole square is 1 1 minus 4 is negative 3 okay now let me put 0 0 minus 4 will give you negative 4 okay and when it is 1 it is 1 minus 1 square minus 4 so that is again a negative 3 and when it is 2 squared 
it is 2 squared minus 4 which is 0 again. So here you find two zeros for the equation, for the polynomial, okay? So since it is a quadratic polynomial, that is the highest degree is 2. It is a second degree polynomial. Your degree is 2 here, right? So that's a second degree polynomial. So you would have two zeros here. And just see what happens when we plot this on the graph. So it is like, you know, uh, uh, negative 2 is 0. So it is here. Okay. This point is here. Then a uh, negative 1 is negative 3. So it is here. Then you have uh, 0 equals negative 4. Let's not show that because your negative 4 will be somewhere here. Okay. I'll show that too. So your 0 is negative 4. Then your 1 is negative 3 again. So it is here again. Okay. And your 2 is 0. So you find the 2 here. So when you join this, you would see that you get a U shape here. Okay. Since I'm using a free hand drawing, it may not be that perfect. So you see that the line cuts the x-axis at two places. One is over here and one is over here. Don't count this because this is in the y-axis. Okay, this cut, the graph is cutting here at y-axis. So don't bother here. So you would find two zeros here. One here and the second one here. So when it is two degree polynomial, you get, you see that the graph cuts the uh, x-axis at two different places. Okay. Let's try one more with the third degree polynomial. Say for instance, if your p of x is equal to, let's write a third degree, simple third degree polynomial I'm using here. So maybe x cubed minus 4x. Okay. Let's do this. So here again, I'm going to give values for x and I'm going to find what is my y, right? So here it says y equals x cubed minus 4x. So let me give the value here again. Uh, I'll take it as negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1 and 2, okay? So here you see, here it will be a negative 2 the whole cube minus 4 times negative 2, right? Replace all your x with negative 2. So negative 2 the whole cube is negative 8 and here this is positive 8. So you will get a 0 here as y, okay? Now here when it is 1, it is 1 cubed minus 4 times negative 1, right? So 1 cubed, negative 1, the whole cube is negative 1 here. And here it is positive 4. So that is 3 here, understood? So when x is 0, so this is 0 minus 0. So that's a 0 again. Oh, you got another 0 here. Now when it is 1, it is 1 cubed minus 4 times 1, okay? So that is my 1 minus 4, that is minus 3 here. And finally you have 2 cubed. 2 cubed is 8. 8 minus 4 times 2. That is 8 minus 8, right? So that is again a 0. So for this is since this is a third degree polynomial, cubic polynomial, right? This is a third degree polynomial. So you would get 3 zeros for this okay one here one here and the other one here so when you plot this in the graph your minus 2 is 0 right so this will be here then minus 1 is 3 minus 1 is 3 so that's here okay at this point okay now you have a 0 and 0 is 0 so this is again at this point, okay, here, here, and then it is, 1 is negative 3. For 1 it is negative 3, so it comes here. Then for 2 it is 0 again. So when I plot this, 
it will be like from here it goes straight here then it comes down here here and then it goes up like this right so what happens you find there the graph is cutting your x-axis at three point okay at three point it cuts it's because this is because it's a third degree polynomial cubic polynomial right so you have three zeros for this understood the relationship between the zeros and the degree of a polynomial yeah I repeat that so your zeros of a polynomial depends directly on the degree of that polynomial the order of the polynomial okay the highest degree of the polynomial yeah we are going to find the degrees of each polynomial okay so let's take the first one the degree of the polynomial depends on how many times the gra the graph touches the x axis right in the first example here you see that the line is over here right so here it doesn't touch the x axis at all so here your degree is zero understood that means the polynomial should be a constant number okay now the second picture look at this second picture here what happens you find the graph cutting the x axis at only one point okay you find the curves and all but still the graph touches the x axis at only one point so this is one degree polynomial okay this is one degree so otherwise you can call it linear polynomial the third picture i think now you can guess what the degree would be you find the graph touching the x axis at this point here again and at this point right so it touches the x axis at three places so you can say this is third degree polynomial okay so the degree here is 3 and coming to the fourth picture here it is a u shaped graph given here and you find that it touches the x axis at two points just see where how many times it touches the x axis okay it comes down goes back again upwards so what happens it touches twice so this is a quadratic polynomial or two degree okay the degree is two here the fifth picture i know that you all know what it is right you can now say what degree it is. So this is 1, 2, 3 and then 4 here. So here you can say 4 degree polynomial, right? The degree is 4. And finally, in the final picture, you see it touched at 1, 2, 3. Please don't count this. Because this is cutting the y-axis, not the x-axis. I keep repeatedly saying, you have to see where it all it cuts the x-axis. The graph cuts the x-axis, okay? So here only thrice it cuts. So this is third degree polynomial, okay? So this is three. Did you understand the relationship? I hope to see you with more videos. Till then, bye.